Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing example on properties of relation. Welcome back friends, now we are going to discuss 10 examples based on properties of relation. So before watching this video, make sure that you watch the previous video because in that video we have covered the entire concept of uh, what are the different properties? So there are four properties: reflexive, symmetric, anti-symmetric, and transitive. So what is the definition? A comma A belongs to R. For every A belongs to A, that is called reflexive. That means for reflexive, all the self element must be present. What is the criteria for symmetric? If A comma B belongs to R, then B comma A does not belong. Uh, then B comma A belongs to R. That means if there is element A comma B, then B comma A must be present. Anti-symmetric is opposite to symmetric. A comma B belongs to R then B comma A does not belong to R in case of symmetric and anti-symmetric the self element doesn't matter and finally we have transitive that is A comma B B comma C then A comma C must be present there are special case and what is that special case if there is no A comma B then we not if there is no A comma B then it is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric and for transitive there are two conditions if only one condition is present or no condition is present then it is transitive so this is the concept that we discussed in the last video and if you have any doubt so no problem we're going to discuss these 10 problems in details and we're going to discuss all the properties so after this video it will be very clear say this topic is difficult to understand initially but once you understood this is one of the simplest topic and one of the very interesting topic so let us start uh, first of all there are two concepts we're going to extend the concept of properties and we're going to discuss equivalence relation and positive. So what do you mean by equivalence relation? If a relation is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, then the relation is said to be equivalence. And if a relation is reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive, then the relation is said to be positive. So what may come in the exam? In your gate exam, MCQs exam or written exam, a relation will be given and you need to check whether it is a reflex, uh, whether it is equivalence or positive. So let us start. So that we'll discuss later on. First of all, just concentrate. We just need to check out of this 10 relation which one are reflexive, which one are symmetric, anti-symmetric, and transitive. Let us start. Let us begin first. Observe this 10 relation. If you understood the last video, pause this video and what we generally do in the classroom. I just give this question to students and give them time 10-15 minutes, and the students try, and after that, we discuss the solution. So the same thing we're going to do here. Pause this video. If you understood the last video, just try to solve all the problems and you can verify your results. So let us start. First of all, if you have tried this question, first of all, concentrate on relation number 10. It's actually not a relation. It's actually not a relation. Why? Because what is the criteria for a relation? It has to be a subset of A cross A. Since there is only one set A, so whatever the relations are there it has to be a subset of a cross a so in a cross a you can get term 1 2 3 and 4 only but see here there is a term 5 so it's not a mistake i have purposely put 5 here so that it's actually not a relation why it's not a subset of a cross a since it is not a relation obviously these are the properties of a relation if this is not a relation Obviously, uh, we no need to check any property because for checking the property, it has to be relation first. It's not a relation because of this term 3 comma 5. Therefore, we're not going to consider 3 comma 5 for the further discussion. So we are going to avoid it. So let us discuss the remaining. First of all, we're going to identify which relations are reflexive out of all the nine relations, remaining nine relations. So what is the criteria, criteria for reflexive? All the self term must be present that means if this is my relation a relation is reflexive in which 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 all the terms are present so let us check 1 1 that's it 2 2 is not present therefore it's not a reflexive 1 1 present 4 4 present 2 2 and 3 3 are missing therefore it's not a reflexive what about r2 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 it is a reflexive next 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 it is reflexive again what about r4 it is not reflexive why because 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 all should be present 4 4 is missing it's not reflexive r5 not reflexive r6 r6 means null 
Null means nothing. For relation to be reflexive, all must be present. Here there is nothing. So obviously it can't be reflexive. Next. R7. R7 is A cross A. That means in this particular relation, all the elements will be present of A cross A. So just find it out A cross A, write it on A again, 1, 2, 3, 4 and find out A cross A. That means in this particular relation, all elements will be present. So obviously in that uh, relation 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, all will be present. Therefore, it is a reflexo. What about R8? 1, 1, 2, 2 is missing. See here. 3, 3, 4, 4 is there not, doesn't matter to us. 1, 1, 2, 2 is present. Uh, 2, 2 is missing. That means that is, that is it. It's not a reflexo only one term if only one term also missing it's not reflexive it doesn't matter two terms three terms what about r9 again it's not reflexive so this is your reflexive relation r2 r3 and r7 let us move on and let us discuss symmetric now see for symmetric and anti symmetric let us check uh, simultaneously symmetric and anti symmetric first of all self term doesn't matter for both so this 1 1 doesn't matter see here 1 2 is present but 2 1 is not present 1 2 is present now symmetric and anti-symmetric generally students can get confused in this so full concentration and it will be very clear the next uh, 10, 10 minutes see here 1 1 is present doesn't matter to us 1 2 is present 2 1 is not present it is not a symmetric because if only one term let's discuss symmetric first then we'll go ahead with anti-symmetric so that there will be no confusion so 1 1 present doesn't matter 1 2 is there or 2 1 is not there that's it it's not a symmetric only one pair if it is not satisfying the condition that's it it's not symmetric no need to check uh, further no need to go ahead what about this doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter 1 2 a b b a so this pair satisfying and these pair doesn't matter to us therefore it is symmetric r2 is symmetric what about r3 doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. In short, R3 and R4, all only self terms are there, which are doesn't matter to us. If you leave this term, we'll be left with the empty bracket. That means A comma B is not present. Therefore, it is by default symmetric. So in short, if you want to remember, or you can remember in this way, or you can make a note of it, only self elements, then it is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric. Only self element, then it is symmetric as well as anti symmetric. So I can directly write it on anti symmetric here because it doesn't matter to us. In case of symmetric as well as anti symmetric, self element doesn't matter to us. And so if it doesn't matter to us, we'll be left with the uh, empty set. That means a comma b is not present, b comma is also not present. Uh, no need to check b comma a. So whether it is there or not, obviously it will not be there. In short, if there are self element, then it is symmetric, anti symmetric that we have discussed in the last video also or make a note of it only self elements only self elements here then it is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric next r5 r5 is not symmetric because 1 3 is present 3 1 is not present it is not symmetric what about r6 r6 is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric why it is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric because phi means nothing that means a comma b is not present if a comma b is not present then it is by default symmetric by default anti-symmetric by default transitive also next r7 r7 all the terms are there means 1 comma 2 if there 2 comma 1 is also there 3 comma 1 is there 1 comma 3 is also there so all the terms are there therefore r7 is symmetric next r8 see here 1 2 but 2 1 i am not finding uh, i am not getting 2 1 so therefore it is not a symmetric r9 1 3 3 1 4 2 2 4 and it doesn't matter therefore r9 so we're done with symmetric let us discuss anti-symmetric what about the first term doesn't matter it doesn't matter 1 2 present 2 1 is not there good 2 3 present 3 2 not there good 1 3 is there 3 1 is not there good it's anti-symmetric what about R2? It's not anti-symmetric because A comma B and B comma A both are present. It is not anti-symmetric. R3, R4 we are already discussed. R5, R5 is also anti-symmetric. Why? Because 1, 3 is there, 3, 1 is not there, 2, 1 is there, 2, 1, 2 is not there. R5 is also anti-symmetric. Next, R6, R7 we have already done with the discussion. R8, not anti-symmetric. 
further no need to check if there is only one if at least one pair not satisfying the condition no need to check uh, no need to go ahead what about r9 again not anti symmetric now let's discuss the transitive part transitive you need to check manually see here one one this is ending with one this is starting with one so one comma two one 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 two one comma two it's present one two two three one three it is present and self doesn't matter self doesn't matter in case of symmetric anti-symmetric transitive uh, i think we have not written in uh, definition so you can make a note of it self doesn't matter in symmetric anti-symmetric as well as transitive so this doesn't matter this doesn't matter one 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 two one two two three uh one two two three one three and so on so it is anti uh, it is transitive you need to check uh, manually no other option one two two one 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 then one two 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 one two that's it if you check you will find r2 is transitive self doesn't matter r3 r4 and r6 are transitive because self doesn't matter to us and r6 is empty empty means there is no condition if there is no condition it is by default transitive in case of symmetric if a comma b is not present that means the condition is not there it is symmetric as well as anti-symmetric in case of transitive there are two conditions if only one condition present then also it is transitive no condition present it also transitive if both are conditions are there then you're going to check for the third one next r7 will be transitive r7 will be transitive why because all the elements are present 1 2 2 3 1 3 will be obviously present huh, what about r5 we missed it is it transitive you might be thinking yes sir it's transitive how huh? 1 3 nothing starting from 3 that means only a comma b second condition is not present therefore it is transitive see this relation can be written as obviously you can write it down in this way so see here 2 1 1 3 so what should be present 2 3 if you just swap the terms so that is perfectly fine with the set so 2 1 1 3 so 2 3 must be present but 2 3 is not there in this particular relation therefore it is not transitive therefore i am not written here what about r8 uh, we need to check 1 3 3 1 so 1 1 it's there 3 3 3 2 that means 3 2 yeah it's there 1 4 4 2 1 2 it's also there so is there any term yes all terms are present r8 is transitive what about r9 now we need to check for r9 r9 is not transitive see here 1 3 3 1 so 1 1 must be present 1 3 3 1 so 1 1 must be present and there is no 1 1 so therefore r9 is not a transitive yes please is this topic clear yes please now please check how many answer you got it right watch these two videos twice thrice and the topic will be very clear to you now let us check which of the following relations are equivalence and which are the following are posit what is the condition for equivalence reflexive symmetric and transitive so let us check which relation satisfying all the criteria reflexive symmetric and transitive reflexive symmetric and transitive so r2 is satisfying all the criteria therefore r2 is equivalence relation what about r3 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 and r3 again r3 is equivalence relation what about r7 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 again r7 is equivalence relation so we got three relations which are your equivalence relation now let me check which relations are posit it has to be reflexive anti-symmetric and transitive so r3 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 so r3 is your posit next then we have that is it because r2 is not present r7 is also not present that's it so if you consider this 10 examples r2 r3 r7 are equivalence whereas r3 is your poset so that is the whole concept hope you understood hope you enjoyed this lectures 
watch this video twice and thrice or uh, as as many number of times you want because this concept is very important till the time you are clear with this hope you understood done with it thank you